Greetings, everybody. We're joining Gamer here, and I'm here with my fourth and probably final segment of my video series of the, the Atari 2600 plug and play. Detailing both Adventure and Breakout. As I play through both games. This would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Okay, let's start with Adventure. One of the very first, well, Adventure games, because straight into the point for its title anyway. Game 1. Get the key, enter the castle, get the arrow thing, which is actually a spear, which is needed to defeat the, the dragons. Yeah, those things, there are three of them in the game. Before I go out adventuring, I have to kill all of them. There should be a fur. There should be a fur dragon. Yeah, there's supposed to be dragons, though. I think they look more like. Oh come on! Oh, I lost my spear all the way up there. So I run to the fur one. I just have to run. What's underneath the lows down here? The black key. You know, they look more, you know, they're supposed to be dragons, but you know they look like, I just realized what they look like, because they always look like something, like, if you looked at them, they kind of look like Sneeches. <laughs> does anyone remember, does, does anyone remember that old Dr. Seuss story? <laughs> I don't know why I do, I haven't thought about that story in years. Okay, hey, so where the hell is the stupid thing? Is the stupid is the fur dragon? Um, unless the fur dragon is only in the other versions. A magnet. Oh, the trophy, the, the which is the, the, was was stolen. The golden chalice, which was stolen, and has to be recovered. Okay, well, the golden chalice is what you need to win the game. Say, so, yeah, not a very long game, but it was one of the first. It was actually based off of an old text adventure a game called Colossal Cave Adventure. It was basically an attempt to make the game and an to make, to translate the game to, to make the game a graphical game. Oh yes, yeah, you win because you're Atari Boom. So I'll try game two and see how long that lasts. And a bat to stole my spear. Ask Captain the Bat. Oh, see, yeah, it looks like a snitch. Let go of me. Good. Now I have this thing, so I can kill, see. Let's see. You know, I've never played the um, other versions of this before. Okay, I have no idea what the hell that's supposed to do. Things are basically put in different locations in the this one from what I understand. Yeah, this actually I played this thing a few times, but I, I never really got very far in this. In the second map, in the second version, or the third one. Yeah, I kept eating, I kept eating those stupid dragons. So with this spear, I should be able to kill them. Oh come on, bat! You suck! Stop stealing my, my stop stealing my stuff. 
And I literally have no idea what this is supposed to do. Oh yes, this is a thing that lets you get to passengers. Okay, I have I have the key. Well, not that key. It's the key to the. To the first palace at the start of the game. Only I have no idea where the hell I'm going. Hopefully, okay. I got in. There's nothing in here. Or is this just keeping us open for vanity for later? In the grand adventure. Oh, a white key. That probably goes to that white castle. Not the not the company white castle, but the actual white castle. <laughs> Let's just roll around here. Okay, that did jack. That, that didn't do anything. Okay, that didn't do anything either. Still a lot of fun, though. Adventure. And you know, it's literally like embarking on an adventure. And apparently in the Atari, ver in the um, original Atari version, there was an Easter egg in the where you could basically find the uh, creator's name. Because this is at a time when game developers were not really credited. Which was a terrible way to do business. But a couple, of, yeah, a couple of developers managed to sneak certain Easter eggs into their games to hide the. They yeah, managed to hide some certain. managed to basically smuggle their names into some of their games. Like for example, the creator put credit himself in the, of this game credit put credit himself in this because for some reason they thought that that anybody can make these games, which is probably resulted in half of the disasters on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, of which there were a lot of disasters. There are a lot of disasters on the 2600. Okay, I think this is what I need. I don't know what it's for, though. You know, this is actually exciting. Actually doing this. Especially if I actually get through this. And I'll have it, and I'll have it captured on, on, on I'll, I'll have the footage captured. Of me being, of me actually completing this game. Oh my! Oh, bad! You're a jerk. Did you just steal my thing. So that's how you use this. You know, for years I've always wondered how this thing is used. Now I know. Did you steal the white key? That bat can go screw itself.
you know what? Screw this. I might get to this one day, but I still have one more game to cover. Breakout. I have covered all the games on this collection. Now, Breakout. I've always, okay, I've always enjoyed this game. This is a game I could literally play for hours on end. And I've done it. Though I've never though even though I've never been able to clear the screen this game. The one I'm told there's only two or three screens anyway, so what's the point? Let's keep playing. And part and part of the reason I discovered years later is that Breakout was never intended to be played at the Atari joystick. It was designed for it was designed for use with the PAL controller, not this, which is part of what they got wrong with the emulation for this thing. Still doesn't make the game any less fun. I mean, Breakout is one of my favorite games. Breakout and games like it, because it's simple and to the point, and it's still fun. And it's a game that you could that literally anybody can play. And I'm sure most people have played it. Now, if you for some reason haven't played it or you haven't played it while you want to play it, well, the easiest way would be to go to go to the Google would be to go to a Google image search and type in Atari Breakout, and it'll it'll turn it into a breakout game for those for those images. And that's a lot of fun. <laughs> no. All you have to do is type Atari Breakout into Google Image Search and you can play a fully functional game of Breakout. And Breakout's not a hard game to, to make. It does make a bunch of objects that disappear when it hit and give you points and cause your, your thing to bounce. Now, this is the type of game where I've literally made a built this game just, just, like, where I this is one of the games I play to alleviate boredom. And it's one of the games I pretty much know how to make. In fact, funny story, I was once in some class, I forgot what class it was. I think yeah, I think it was at some point in my college, I think while I was still in community college. I was so I was there was one class where I was so bored that I literally basically opened up my laptop and I didn't have a breakout game on there, but I could have easily stretched one online. But I decided just for the hell of it to program to completely make to open up a game making program. I forgot what I want to say, Game Factory or Game Maker or something like that. And I managed to build a build a breakout game in like what less than half an hour. Yeah, I'm tempted to show that in a video one day, or a video or a stream of me making this game, of me probably possibly in the Crater City, of me showing me playing Breakout, and then a separate video of playing it. Yeah, not a, not a fancy game, but a simple one. Not like Ark and only of all power ups. But that's not hard to do either. Now, for graphics here, yeah, just a bunch of rectangles. Oh, and I should show us any of our modes. It basically changes every five levels. It gets a little faster. And every fourth level, the thing disappears entirely. Like, like so. Yeah, now there's nothing now, and, and you don't see anything until you hit them. So you hit something. Huh, who would have thought something as stupid as new batteries to make this thing go from not working very well to this?
But yeah, Breakout's one of those games I can just play, I can easily, it's one of those games I know how to make pretty quickly. And it's still fun playing it, to alleviate boredom. I should probably do a stream or a video simply of me making a simple game of Breakout. <laughs> yeah, a pretty simple game of Breakout. <laughs> and then video of me playing it. Yeah, yeah, not a fancy game, but a simple one. Sort of like this. Probably my favorite is the one following level 8. When it goes, when it goes right through. Which in terms of breakout, thing, breakout game is not difficult to do. Yeah, breakout's definitely a fun game with its creation, because if I remember correctly, but the, my gaming history correctly, that it was that it was made by Steve Jobs. Actually, no, it was Steve. It was Steve Wozniak. It was working with Jobs at the time. Those are all at level twelve. <laughs> yeah, and for some reason they didn't. And yeah, and for some reason it's hard to not use this version. And they made another version that was pretty much like it with that fit more than ages or something, but though he found no discernible difference or something. I think I need to look up the story again. This thing how the late founder of Apple had a hand in the creation of um of the, the classic game Breakout. Yeah, one of the games that's about as simple as it gets. And of course there's been so many different versions of Breakout over the years. Perhaps one of my favorites is, um, Arca is, yep, yeah, or one of the better one, best known ones is Arkanoid. Which has a bajillion versions. And perhaps one of the, and one of the best for, and, and, and Arkanoid has a thing where you get power-ups every time you, um, hit some, after you... You hit it after you um, hit certain blocks, which helps you out in certain points. Well, I think one where you can shoot the blocks, one with muscle balls. Well, okay, Sewer Breakout has muscle balls as well. But, no help. <laughs> Okay, let's try one more round. Like, yeah, because this game's a lot of fun. And I found it's more fun though with the power controller. And if you're playing it, if you're playing on PC using a mouse, not the stupid arrow keys. This is a lot of fun, and definitely, and, de and as a kid, this is, and growing up, this, this is, this is one of the games I played the most on this particular plug and play. And one that I made sure to get as soon as I got an actual car 2600, and, we, and was able to use it with an actual PAL controller. And, you know, it's hard to clear a screen because of the controls, and how fast the ball can go. It's still really enjoyable. And this is one game I'll pick up and play anytime. Oh, come on, sometimes it's too fast. Yeah, that's the thing with stupid power controls. 
with the with the stiff joystick instead of the power controller. Which is something that which is probably one of the few things that the that the, that the fourth Atari Flash Act machine got right. It included power controllers to send the games. So the I'm told the machine itself doesn't work well, but the the power controllers work work pretty well for an actual Atari Atari 2600. I mean, the power controller I use of mine is a, is one from the flashback machine, not not an original one. I mean, it works due to the Atari high level of compatibility for controllers. I mean, if you're gonna say you can use a Sega Genesis controller, which came out what over a decade after it was, after it came out, like yeah, because the Atari 2600 was was 1978, and the Sega Genesis was what 89. <laughs> All using, and they both use the same control type. That's also used by Atari 7800, I think the Atari computers as well. As well as the Commodore 64. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on! That went right for a uh, Come on! How did I not register? I'm starting to phase it fizzle out. Yeah, this game just rocks. Yeah, Adventure, yeah, the games on this one, Adventure and Breakout, they're both really good. And games I've always enjoyed. Now, Adventure, I'll probably complete that second mode, that, I'll probably complete the second and third modes on it eventually. Does not right now. Especially how stupid, how easy it is to mess up your progress with something as stupid as getting that halfway thing stuck in a wall. Like that just like that just sounds like a real. That just sounds really stupid. Thing is, also years before I tackled the Zelda second quest and successfully completed it. So who knows? Bouncing back and forth, all. Yeah, the funny thing about the Atari is that it was probably the, um, it was, one, it was one of the earliest game consoles, and it was the earliest to have, well, difficulty settings in games. Which is proof to people who keep bitching about difficulty settings in games that, um, quote unquote, dumbing down, that they've been around since the beginning of games, and they're never going away. Going away. Yeah, because different settings are for different people, basically. Still experiencing the same game in some parts of our. And anyway, that's probably a subject for another time if I ever decide to get around to it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Breakout, one of my all time favorite games. Just set rocks. And like I said, if you haven't played it, there are a whole bunch of options. Like, I'm sure just about every site has a version of this. Plus, as I mentioned, the thing that you type in, you go into Google Image Search, and it's had an entire breakout, you can play it that way. Okay, this is a. Uh, Okay, is it really? Okay, how much more is there to say about this game? Other than that, I can probably play it for hours on end. And hell, I've done it, but I'm not gonna do it now! That wouldn't be a good video. <laughs> now, I would like to eventually clear a screen of this. I mean, I've been trying for over 14 years and I still haven't. Almost 14 years and I still haven't. <laughs> One more round. Now I can clear a couple of stages and sewer break out. Well, um, 
Okay, not easily, but I can do it. Here? I don't know. Maybe it's because the ball is so damn small and fast. Yeah, this just rocks. Yeah, the old Atari version of Breakout. It's as old as you can guess. Yeah, as fun as you can get. Back and forth, back, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna win that mic. Let's see how you at least. Come on, can I at least have the have, sh Okay, one more. Can I at least have something where the ball bounces across the top? Because I love it when it does that. Yeah, this game has all sorts of nice, tech, nice tricks to it. And that, and these, and yeah, this, yeah, this plug and play, like. Yeah, the main reason why I hacked the Atari plug and play because it was the first one I ever got. And it's one of my favorites. Yeah, it's one of my favorite plug and plays. But I found now that the Atari 2600, uh, the actual 2600 controlled much better than this thing did. But it still doesn't ruin the, the style of character for me in this game. Okay. Still fun, and I'll play now. This one, and I'll pick this up. This fucking play, play, play it any day. Now let's see if I can get this thing to bounce across the top. So breakout, not really to say about it because how simple because how simple it is. It's fun to this fun for me to sit back and play this game. <laughs> yeah, I could probably like yeah. <laughs> I've got to do it. I've probably got to do a video. So we'll break out at one point once I get everything. Once everything is settled, my current living situation and all that. Watching the ball bounce back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, but yeah, but the joy. Yeah, I found this is really difficult for joystick. This is so much easier with power controller, but with the joystick, it's like. <laughs> Yeah, because Breakout should never be played with the arrow keys or a joystick like this. Because, because the power control or a mouse allows you to quickly move it to the other side of the screen when the ball decides to bounce all the way to the other side of the screen. <laughs> well, that's pretty much all I can show from Breakout. That is the end of my series on the Atari 2600 plug and play. Just probably turn that off. But that doesn't mean I'm done with the plug in place. Oh no! I still hold I still hold basket full of these things ready to left to, to conquer. And to show and play. And what should be next? Let's see. Sticking in the Yeah, what's, what's, which one what should be next? How should, what's the order I should review these? Or at least them talk about, or at least discuss them. Let's see. Definitely the intelligent, yeah, the intelligent one here is definitely up next. Interesting how this looks absolutely nothing like an actual intelligent controller. I know since I used to have an intelligent years and years and years ago. 
So yeah, this is definitely going to be next on the list. Followed by... Probably buy this Pac-Man, buy this Pac-Man one, because there's a couple different Pac-Man games on here. Then the Spider-Man one. Actually, it shows the Pac- And then the... The Star, then the Star Wars one here. Hmm, should I tackle the Spider-Man or the um, Star Wars one after the Pac-Man? Hmm, Star Wars. Then Spider-Man. Then we have the then next step of that will be the Genesis. And you know, this Genesis Pug and Play also comes with a box that sort of resembles an actual Genesis. Well, a Model 2, a Model 2 Genesis, anyway. And if I feel like it, and just for the hell of it, I might cover this Disney Pug and Play here. Like, I have, I have no idea what's on here. I think my, I think I've only played this like once years ago. I don't think it was any mine. Anyways, it was on my sister. It was, my, it was my, I think it was my sister's or something. But I played a couple times. Had some fun games, I think. But I might cover this. I might not. Who knows? But the next up in the, in the new week, def, start, we'll definitely. And starting a, as, as the week starts, I'll definitely start with this. The Intellivision, the one for the Intellivision plug and play. And there are a lot of games on here. A lot of games on here. Well, until next time, everybody.